But I think the main things is at the end of the day, volleyball is volleyball. It's in the same nine by nine court, and the rules are the same. So we. Uh, <laughs> Is that on the back of your shirt? Yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah something yeah. back of your shirt. Dude, dude, <laughs> a little free shout out for you. Um, and it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the net. You need to still execute to the best of your ability if you want a chance to win. That's it, Brett Walsh. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is the 9x9. Nine nine. My name is Everett Blore. I'm live in Chicago. No, I'm not live in Chicago. You're live <laughs> in Chicago. I'm live in Toronto. He's live in Chicago. That's Rob St. Clair. This is episode 111. It is March 5th, twenty. 24. Ooh, we Rob's there. We got a lot to chat about. There's Champions League. The regular season of Super Lega is done. So the PVF is heating up. We're going to talk about some soccer, which I know you love. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's going to be a, a good day. A good day, all in all. Um, yeah, excited about it. Uh, let's 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 just jump into it. How about Let's it? just go right into Champions League. We saw the second leg of the quarterfinals go down uh, last week, and now we know our four semifinalists, Trentino against Lube, the all-Italian affair, and then you got Poland taking on Turkey, and then Jesse Jeskebsi Weigel against Zirat Bank Ankara. Um, pretty much as expected, Rob, uh, from, from this week to, to last week. I know I went uh, four for four. Uh, I'm pretty sure I called JW just smacking Piacenza in the second leg, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, um, we had some other drama, of course, those ZB getting the getting the, uh, the, the the golden set against Guaguas to getting three donged in the game, but then get going, going back and winning the golden set. At home. <laughs> At home, too. So, yeah. uh, yeah, there, there's there, there was a lot. I mean, it's we've kind of been breaking our own record a couple weeks in a row here of the biggest week of club volleyball of the year. I mean, this was it. This was so far the biggest week of club volleyball on the of the year. Just now, I mean, we had we had all this. We had all this CEV. We had trophies handed out, and we had uh, oh, and Super, Polish Cup too, Super League and Polish like Cup. So, that. and we'll get to all that. But uh, yeah, well, let's talk about Champions League. Let's go. I guess we can go chronologically. And you alluded to it. Uh, we weren't expecting there to be very much drama here, but sure enough, <laughs> Zerod Bank at home, at home now without Matt Anderson, that's an important asterisk, but at home gets three donged by a Spanish team and doesn't even get past 21 points in any of the three sets. But the magic of the golden set, uh, Zerod Bank really ran away with it. They were somehow able to flip a switch. They blocked a bunch of balls. Valter Termat woke up. They ended up winning the fifteen, the golden set, fifteen to seven, which is a beatdown. And uh, Tim, Zirat Bank ad advances, but it wasn't without its uh, its spiciness, that's for sure. Well, to me, it just seemed like at a certain point they just realized that the fastest way for them to win this match was just to go to the golden set, right? There was no, the, like that third set from them was so lackluster. Uh, you could just tell that you could just tell that they were like, we don't like what you want us to like compete for this one, no. Let's just go. Let's just go into a golden set. We'll play you to fifteen. Like we, we know that we can, we can go go to that next level, and, that, and that's exactly what happened. I don't really think we even need to to just discuss it <laughs> much past that. I love I love Guagas's his, his journey though. Of course, me too. Getting to watch Graham Vigras play again gave me gave me a little bit of nostalgia. Graham, please come back just for one more year. That's all we ask. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like Vigras and Nicholas Bruno. You, you absolutely absolutely got to love it. But for the second year in a row, we're going to have a Turkish team in the semifinals. Last year was Hulk Bank. This year, Zero Bank. Right. And uh, now I think there is a little more to talk about about what happens to Zero Bank from here. Because, I mean, sure, you, you can you can argue now in hindsight that, yeah, you go down 2-0 at home to a Spanish team and you understand the situation and you lay down and die in the third and say yeah here like let's go to a golden set i dare you to beat us in that format fine whatever and i know matt anderson was hurt he didn't play and i'm not sure exactly what his uh what his prognosis is bear kai if you let us know like i know i know anderson's hurt but let us know what it is and how long he's going to be out for i do not understand i still do not understand why luciano vicentin is the fourth outside hitter on this roster I completely don't understand that. Why this, on earth did you bring in a guy of that caliber if, this, if you're gonna if he's going to rot on the bench for you? This to me just looks like it's one of those decisions that happened early on, and maybe we don't see it behind closed doors, but 
from what I've seen just on social media this year featuring Vincentine, he just doesn't look like his joyous self. There was one weekend of posts, I'm pretty sure, where Polonsky was there to, to watch him play, and he was he was pretty stoked about that. But there's there's just not – it's just not working for him uh, at Zero Bank. Just him and the coach just clearly – clearly don't get long there doesn't seem to be a spot for him on the court which is a huge uh, a, a huge miss right huge if, you're miss. Be, if you're gonna be bringing in a player like that like we know the level that that, that he can play um but yeah it's, so it's, i don't understand that one at all and then the other problem is that they zero big might have a setter problem because remember in the, they, yeah remember in, the, remember in the first leg like berkai made a good point in the chat like when when zero went to guaguas last week they would have lost three zero because arjlan actually was kept continuing to lose his cool out there was playing like an idiot got subbed out and and the, the backup setter that yatkin guy came in and played well and if now I, we're also hearing that in in the domestic league in the FLA league Arslan Ekshi is kind of nowhere to be found. Like, uh, what is it, Berkai? That he the he hasn't played the last two games. Is that right? So I I completely don't understand what is going on with this team. Where is your starting setter? What are you doing there? What and Berkai also just said that Vicentin was, played the last match in the Efrela League. He was the MVP and then didn't see the court at all today in another domestic match. I don't oh. understand what's going on with that team. It makes no sense to me. And I mean, we will we'll talk about on next week's show kind of our picks for the semifinals. But if, if as it stands right now, unless Matt Anderson comes back and you and like plays at an MVP level, which he has all season. Zero Bank in their current form stands no chance against JSW. <laughs> None. 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 I mean, JW. <sighs> I'm not gonna. Say, I'm. I'm actually not gonna say none because, I, uh, to be perfectly honest, I, I, I haven't been overly impressed with JW and as of as of late. Well, let's uh, talk about them next. Let's talk yeah. about their three zero win over Piacenza. Actually, I do. I do take that back because they were sick. They they were sick in this match. They were good. Um, yeah. They they dominated this match like like through and through it not like not much more to say this is exactly kind of what i thought was going to be happening i didn't think i thought it was going to be more more towards a 3-1 not a 3 nothing slacking like we we saw but jw was really good in this so this was not a slacking this was 22 then overtime then 21 so Meh. not not a slacking now a this down. This ended in the second set because Piacenza had a set point in the second set. Lucarelli buried his serve into the middle of the net. Uh, had, had that been one, and I even said it in the Discord at the time, that, that this series is going to be defined by the next five minutes when it was 24-24 in the second set because uh, in Champions League format, obviously 1-1 and 2-0 are massively, massively different things, even more so than usual. But then Yuri Glotter basically won... The, the second set single-handedly he he served him way out of system and then served an ace to win it 26 24. so J, jsw was very very good jean patry is heating up in a big way he has been their best player the last three or four matches across all competitions and uh rafael shimura was better in this game than he was in the previous leg but where jsw really won this match was in backcourt defense and of course we have no dig stats which is a bummer but JSW touched so many balls. Their so, so many six defenders were in the right spot the entire game long to run down block touches to make plays, and they did an amazing job at turning those into points. Well, that that's exactly it for me. It was all about the block touches. Like yeah. their block was all over the Buizal's offense. It was it was clear to me that Tony UT was the better French setter on the day. No, no doubt about it. Like their their blocking was right on them. Uh, throughout the entire game, to me, I, I thought Fornal was was truly the MVP of this game. I mean, he went eleven for fifteen uh, with two errors, but still eleven for fifteen with two aces and and two blocks. He was yeah, that's awesome, a, a, absolutely unreal. Um, but that's kind of what they need from him, right? Like if if he's not like that, like Shimura isn't going to be putting up a lot of points. So that's 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 kind of what kind of what they need to him. They also served really well. Like, like just, yeah, they did seven, seven aces. The thirteen errors is good. Uh, Piacenza six to eighteen. That's one to three. That's a big difference. A yeah. uh, very good Norbert Huber game. Definitely gotta gotta give him that. I mean, four for six, three blocks and an ace. Very good. Uh, looked looked like a just a lot more engaged than he did the previous week. Like we were calling him out for. And ever you also said last week talking about Fornal. 
for now, if, if if you are the guy, if you are the guy that be the guy, yep, that yeah. you think you are, and that we all think you are, if you won the MVP of the Blue Seagull last year, you need to step up huge in a situation like this, and he did. And I, I yeah. thought a lot of that backcourt defense I was talking about was really coming from him when he was in position six. Yeah, I mean, he was serving well all day. He was passing all right. I wouldn't say great, but decent. And offensively, he was fantastic. And whatever happened to, I mean, th th this shouldn't be surprising because Andrea Anastasi is one of the greatest stooges in all of volleyball. But <laughs> Piacenza, you came up with a winning formula last week that you just completely forgot about and abandoned. You did not make Rafael Samura touch the ball enough. You, you, you did not put nearly enough pressure on him to force him into getting blocked as many times as he did last week or getting subbed out for the idiot that is Marco Sedlicek or whatever it is. That was the weakness in JSW. You saw it a week ago, and you did absolutely nothing to try and regain an advantage in the same area. I just don't understand that. Then the other thing is, is Romy Alonso last week was a massive difference maker. This is Champions League. You don't have foreigner limit rot problems. Why are you starting Eduardo Kaneski for two sets? What are we doing? Yeah. And I mean, Alonso came in and made an immediate impact, right? In, in that third set that he Breaking played. news. Um, <laughs> breaking news. Uh, I, I think when we, we I talked about it before, I think Romy Alonso is severely underrated. Really um, and he, he's severely handcuffed by the, the foreigner rule as well. But just a mismanagement of the roster there by, by Anastasi. Um, and it's so weird that they like they were so well prepared for that first game, and they just they just seemed like they were caught with their pants around their ankles uh, for for game number two. Like that's once again, true. I, I, I thought that, but like what this is exactly what we talked about last week. Like we we talked about how into the Mendez against Anastasi isn't even a competition, right? Yeah. And that's that's exactly what happened, you know. Uh, Anastasi is they're playing go fish, and Mendez is playing this. <laughs> yeah pretty much uh yeah none of the piacenza wings played very well either other than yuri romano he was the only good player on the team honestly uh Leal was bad lucarelli was Lucarelli really was fine not good enough uh, richina came in off the bench and was was nothing special uh yeah piacenza just didn't have it bad coaching bad preparedness but we yeah we i definitely wasn't that surprised to see mendez get his team ready to go here yeah the the when, when you're touching that many balls, it, it means you're better coached, better prepared for the matchup if you are in the right places against a team that you've already seen. Yeah, they, they were just, they were being read all day. Yep. And, and yeah. It's, so, to uh, me, it, yeah. We'll talk about JSW more in a minute because they had another uh, major competition over the weekend, but they, I mean, they went to a Champions League final last year. They look pretty darn good given who their matchup is against the odd bank in the semis to maybe go back there i, I they're my early favorite yeah I, I i would agree i would i would definitely agree to be uh looking at looking to go back to that final all right rob um go ahead and over to a rematch of a quarterfinal from last year now this one was all lube lube oh, yeah. was dominant their their offense in this one was absolutely filthy. Um, Marlon Yant was fantastic with 18 points. Alex Nikolov had 17 and 15 for Lagumja. Just the trio of outsides just motoring down for Lube. And it was just one of those games that it seems that Hawkbank either plays really well or just the wheels have completely fallen off. And, the, and there's no in-between for this team. Yeah, pretty much. And remember, like the situation with this match was that Lube only needed two sets. Yeah. So that that when they went up two to one, and that that fourth that fourth set was completely meaningless. Both teams put in the benches. Uh, it's the first thing that's really important to point out here is that Lube got through the first basically two, maybe two and a half sets of this match without Luciano Decheco. With Jacob De Tella. Yeah, it was very interesting because DeCecco started and then immediately like subbed himself out and ran into the locker room. We we heard that maybe he was dealing with food poisoning. And Jacob Tella came in and won them the first set and played well enough in the second and then and started the first couple points of the third before DeCecco was ready to come back in. Mm -hmm. And Hawkbeck knew the situation. One 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 in the third set. You know that if you lose another set, then, then your Champions League is over and you get embarrassed. 25 to 15 25 that, to 15 in the last real set of your tournament who's 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 
on that Hall Bank team, whether it's an athlete or a coach who's recognizing the fact that arguably the best setter in the world on the other side is all of a sudden MIA. And you have a guy who's come in who hasn't really run the offense all year long. He hasn't. He's come in, he he's come hasn't. in strictly as a, as a serving sub. This is the first time we've been able to see Jakob Tella in game, and it's in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And no one on bank is like, let's put our fucking foot to the floor, pedal to the metal, or our neck, our, our foot on their throats, and go for this? Like, what is going on for a Hulk bank? Namir, Ma, Perrin, Anga, Beth, like, like someone, like Koach, someone identify that this is your golden opportunity to do something. Instead, they, they just let it slip through their fingers. They just seemed whiny, and it was ah. Uh, and like I, I had big hopes for for Hulk Bank, for this Hulk Bank teams for for a lot of reasons. They were my dark horse to win it all. I mean, they've been dominating the Effort League all year long, but when they come to these international competitions, they just like. It's it's all or nothing with them, and and this one we had nothing. Man, the Hawk Bank. Remember, they they didn't even medal at the Club World Championship somehow, mm-hmm. and and they added Irvin Ingapet for for this season, and didn't even make it as far as they did last year. It's yeah. it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy the 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 failure that that this team has had to deal with an international competition. Now they still probably are the favorite to win the FLR league. They very well may do that, but uh, this has got to be really disappointing. I mean, Namir Abdelaziz only 20% efficiency in the most important match. Yeah. 11 for 30 with five, like blocked five times like that. That's, that's not good enough. And, And I actually thought like just on the eye test that, like early in this game, that Hulk Bank looked locked into me. Specifically, Irvin Ingapet did. Irvin Ingapet really looked locked into me. This, I don't think this particular loss falls on his shoulders very much at all. I thought no, that he was no. locked in. He his his statistics were good, but he was he was the he was good, Irvin. And you can, mm-hmm. like those of us that have watched him over his career, we can tell pretty darn quick if you're going to get good Irvin or bad Irvin that day. That was good, Irvin. And they still just couldn't do anything to slow down Lube's offense with, with a backup setter who hasn't hardly touched a ball with two hands the entire season. It's crazy. To me, it, it, they lost it in the first set, right? Because when DeCheco goes running off, they, 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 they were down by a lot. Like it was eight to Lube in Lube's favor to start this match. Yep. Right. I think it and was then- eight to nothing. It, I, it, it was at least the seven six, to nothing. Yeah, it was like five, five nothing, six nothing. Uh, kind of when I when I turned the match on, um, and then they were able to bring it back. Like it was it was sixteen fourteen twenty twenty one nineteen, but they were ab- never able to to fill in that gap, and that was with telesetting too. Right. Um. That that was kind of like they were able to bring it back nicely in in the second, but then as soon as Checo came in, it just changed that third set completely. And they just got defeated. It really reminded me almost of when um, Tila came in for Germany against Canada in, in World League in, in Ottawa last year. When we, or sorry, not World League, VNL, when we crushed them in the first set and they brought in Tila. And then all of a sudden our blockers were on skates and we couldn't do anything. It was very much of that same vibe. And Hulk Bank just got like, like comfortable in the zone of Jakob Tela playing and let, let Lube come back. But the fact that they weren't able to close the deal in that first set to me is 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 what killed them because they made like they made they, they built up the momentum they made the comeback they they filled up that gap but they were just never never able to push it back. But also, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Jakob Tella to come in like for that. sure. Like there's there's been massive question marks on him, and I, I think in traditionally we've seen American setters go to go to the go to the Superliga and kind of fizzle out. Right, like when's the last time an American setter has gone to the the Superliga and, and and had success right off the bat? Like no one really. So, he's not American, but he did come out of the NCAA. It's a Im, important distinction. Uh, sorry, 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 you're right. You're. Yeah, I apologize. Um, <laughs> yeah, he he was he was good, man. Talk about it. He was good. He was he was poised. He he was poised, which which to me was was fantastic. But big ups big ups to Lube. I think Marlon Yant had a fantastic match. Oh. Nikolov, Nikolov was really good. Like that Dude, was a Nikolov, classic. We gotta, we gotta talk more about Alex Nikolov's numbers. I mean he he 17 points, passed the ball, lights out. That's always been an issue for him. Seventy one percent positive. Sixteen for twenty nine with only two unforced errors, no block. That's basically fifty percent efficiency. And, Offensively, and a, he's 
he's, he's special, dude. He really is special. But in my opinion, and people are saying it in the chat, the MVP of the series is Otis Lagunja. Playing mm-hmm. against his home country, playing against his brother, very sparingly. We d- we barely saw Mirza at all. But uh, Otis Lagunja in both of these series outplayed Namir Abdelaziz straight up. He yeah. did 15 points, 10 for 15 with four blocks and an ace in the three sets that mattered. Impressive. That's really, really good. Namir has not been good in gut check time. He's not been good in pressure situ- situations. So it's it's something that I'm going to be watching quite a bit. Especially with the Dutch kind of being on the cusp like they are for the, for this summer. Like they're not. They're not on the no, cusp. Oh no, no, they're not. No, you're right. You're they're right. Not. It's just it's just <laughs> Serbia in Cuba. I apologize. Yeah. You're right. But uh, uh, I mean huge ups to Lube. I mean, this is what happens when this team plays without res- the restrictions of the foreigner limit. I think it makes all the difference in the world for them to be able to play Lagumja, Decheco, Chin and Yeze, and then Nikolov and Yan to the outsides. It's it's a, an amazingly different looking team when they can do that. Differences in the Superliga, they can't do that. So we'll talk about that in a little bit is what, what their playoffs are going to look like and what, what choices they have to make. But this uh, this is a this is a dangerous team, even in Champions League, because their opponent will be Trentino. Trentino mopped the floor at home with Berlin. This is no surprise at all. No. Never, never a doubt. The I problem is. Yeah, there's only one thing to talk about from this match. Re- Ricardo Spertoli, Trentino's Massive. starting setter, broke okay. his left pinky finger. He had surgery on it today, Tuesday, March 5th. I have no idea. I don't think anybody has any idea of just how long he will be out. Trentino is without their starting setter for the beginnings of the Super Lega playoffs and almost definitely, unless Spertoli can play a week from tomorrow, for the first leg of a Champions League series with Lube Chivu Nova. Just how well can Trentino handle their backup setter, this Aquarone guy who I know absolutely nothing about? Nothing. That is, and, None. and if you're Lube, if you're Lube Chivu Nova and you see that news and you see the the, the, the quarterback of the, one of the best teams on the planet go down during the time window that you're going to play him, you got to be licking your lips, man. Lube is the big winner here if, if there has to be one. Yeah, losing Spertoli, who to me is a top ten setter in the world. The fact that he doesn't get more minutes on the national team is an absolute is an absolute shame. Like it's an it's a it's an absolute crime. I mean, he's the center of this team. He's signed to, to this squad until twenty twenty seven. He's the only yep. he's the only player cern- signed on that long of a contract. And I mean, long contracts in volleyball aren't aren't all that common. Um, I love it when they happen. Love love it when they happen, and they need to happen more. But this is huge. This changes everything. I honestly like. I look at Modena now having a chance in the Super League playoffs. Um, like I, I, I won't lie, like losing Spertoli is a, a massive thing, and like a broken pinky too as a setter. Like that's just one of those things that you can play with it. Like maybe not a hundred percent, but it, it might really mess you up. You know, yeah, it might, this, you know, this isn't this isn't baseball having a scuffed fingernail and you're going to go on the IR for 10 days like this is <laughs> this is this is real stuff. Uh, yeah. Yes, that is an absolute shot at baseball because it, it is oh, hands sure. down that, the worst sport in the world. No, that 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 would be soccer by far. And it's it's not no close. baseball it's, sucks. Ba- baseball, baseball is sucks. The, the injury thing in baseball is a problem. There are those athletes are incredibly soft. But yeah, the, the setter is probably the only position that you couldn't play with a broken pinky that it because it's going to mess up your delivery. If, if like if you buddy tape it to your ring finger, then it's still going to mess up your delivery. Like. Uh, it, and it sounds like, according to the chat, that that Spiritually's out for a month. Can Trentino survive the Scudetto in the Champions League playoffs for a month without him? Man, I don't know. The thing is, though, that if somehow they beat Lube in the Champions League series, they do have a month and a half off before the Super Finals. The first if, how how if, are they going to beat Lube? If, how are they going to beat Lube without Spertoli? Because Mi- Alessandro Micheletto right now is the best player on the planet, and he's going to have to put that team on both of his shoulders and carry them wherever they're going to go. And this, this, this could not have come at a worse time because like Trentino is putting together a, a fantastic season. They are putting together a potentially dual trophy season, and this like it could potentially just be all gone. And no one will remember that. Imagine if they lose in the semifinals and the quarterfinals. At least when Perugia did it last year, it was a big thing because of 
what they were doing. Yeah, they choked in no, spectacular fashion. They choked in spectacular fashion. So if you're going to go down, you might as well go down big. But no one will remember this Trentino team if this is where they end. And that's wild. It's so that's, depressing. That's it's depressing wild. because th this Trentino team has been the best and most consistent team in all of volleyball this year. They, Even though they haven't actually won anything, they didn't win the Super Cup or the Coppa Italia, but they... Uh, they were, they would have been the favorite going into Champions League if Ricardo Spiritoli didn't get hurt, and it's, it's just such a shame. It, but, it's but, a shame. But, but then again, on the flip side, if you are Alessandro Accarone, this is what you've dreamed of. Yep. This is what you've spent your entire life. Like I'm on his volley box right now, and he's been a solid like level, like like B. Serie B, Syria B type guy until this year, until this year when he was brought in to be the the backup setter. And you know what? How like, old is he? He's a ninety nine. Okay, so he's not he's not terribly old, but he's not like super young either. So he's gonna be twenty five um, this year. He's mostly been playing for San Croce, like that's he he's been playing for them since twenty fourteen, other than one year in in uh, sixteen seventeen. Um, and last year, last year you played for Moto Mota di Livenza. So, but oh, like, whoever. like, yeah, whoever doesn't doesn't really matter. But this is what you've been dreaming of. Like, this is this is your chance. So, who knows? Maybe we have a Jeremy Lin storyline storyline, right? Maybe maybe we're we're up for for another episode of Lin sanity here, and Akarone is going to take them on on a magnificent magnificent run. Then he's going to get called up to the national team. Like, you know, you know that's what's going on in his head right now for sure. And yes, we, we do know that Trentino signed some setter from the French League named Matteo Garcia, uh, non-factor. Aquarone will be the guy. That is, that, yeah. that, there, there's there's no doubt about it. Aquarone will be their starting setter until Ricardo Spetoli returns. Garcia was just for practice and for emergency. So this so Aquarone kid's going to be the guy. We're going to see what he's got. And uh, pressure now, or, I mean, it's not even really pressure per se. It's just like a, a proven opportunity for, for Alessandro Micheletto. How good can he be really without his starting setter and and we'll see but yeah, yeah Matt, uh, matsu garcia is a good looking dude though i think france <laughs> might have some of the best looking volleyball players in the world yeah that wouldn't uh wouldn't i wouldn't argue against that like he, he's a good looking guy you should go to his he, he should go to his, volley, his volleyball he almost looks like timothy carl mm. All right, so uh, that's it for Men's Champions League. Semifinals start next week. We will preview them and make our picks on next week's show. Let's move on, Everett, to the women, where uh, there was really only one series that kind of hung in the balance. We'll get to that one in a second. I want to start, though, with Fenerbahce uh, rebounding from the upset pretty predictably. Uh, they destroyed Stuttgart the first two sets credit to Stuttgart for taking the third, but uh, this really kind of wasn't ever in doubt. The interesting part about this is that woman that you see there in the back of your picture, Melissa Ooh. Vargas, started this match and dropped 24 <laughs> on 24 for 43 attacking at sky-high efficiency. So yeah, obviously she was great. Everett, what what do you think about this? Is Was this the right decision? I'm I'm terrified, Rob. Me too. I'm terrified for two reasons. First and foremost, I'm terrified for Melissa Vargas and her health. I'm I'm terrified that this might be too too early and too soon and and too much, um, because you know what, she's a superstar and they're gonna they're gonna want it run want to run her into the ground. I mean, Fenerbahce like they want they want that Champions League. There's no doubt about it. Turkey wants that Champions League. Hundred percent, just just in general. Um, so I, I I'm terrified that this meet might be too much too soon. But I'm also terrified for the rest of the world because if she's able to come back and drop 24 like this, coming off of injury, then we're all fucked. Yeah. In every, every other country this summer is absolutely fucked because she's a, she's a monster. There's no player on the women's side that plays like her. And it's absolutely ludicrous to consider that, like, I remember watching a Gonu and just being like, no, for first I was watching Buskovic, like, this is this is peak women's volleyball. This is amazing. And then a Gonu comes on the scene, you're like, wow, this is like, like two of them blows your mind. You got Isabel Hawk, who's just like, hey guys, don't forget about me. And Melissa Vargas is like, screw you all. But like, well, I'm just, I'm just going to be ahead over all of you. Um, so yeah, part of me is absolutely stoked by the fact that she's able to come out and drop 24 points. And I mean, hey, let's talk about inf 
you, we can definitely talk about slightly inferior competition. It's a great story that Stuttgart was able to come through yes. and win that win that match last time. But like, let's not pretend that these two teams play in the same league, um, right? So, but hey, twenty four points is twenty four points, and twenty four points in a Champions League quarter is still twenty four points in the Champions League quarter, right? So, yeah, I like if, if they have her and she's healthy and she's ready to go. Why not? Um, I do feel for Magdalena Stizak a little bit though. Like Me too. it just seems to be the constant. She's she's always the the bridesmaid, never the bride type of scenario out there. Catherine Heigl, twenty seven dresses because she's just rack she's just racking them up. Um, yeah, she yeah, was I've, given like one one match of match of a chance. I know. I, I've got a couple questions. All of them pertain kind of to Stefano Lavarini. The the first one is once Fenerbahce now because they have not until this point played a good team in Champions League. Remember they went fifteen and zero in sets and pools. They uh they did lose that weird match on the road to Stuttgart, but like now now they're gonna get a, a very real opponent, and uh, I think Malonza, right? Is that is that who they get in the bracket? Yeah, it is. So, what is Lavarini gonna do in in a couple different areas? For the, the opposite is is a, is a fair question. I think now that you've started Melissa Vargas once, you have no choice but to continue, but to continue to start her because I think that that Lavarini has lost Magdalena Stisiak for the season. Yeah, I, just I, like just I, like Burkett, I, Burkett said in the chat, I fully I fully agree with yeah. that. The like, other thing you, is that remember Lavarini coaches the Polish national team. Will this decision have ripple effects into the national team season with Stisiak trying to play for a coach a d- different role, but? Will she still? Well, is that relationship going to be fractured on the national team level as well? I guess well, that remains to be seen. The other thing is, what are they going to do at outside hitter? I don't really understand why Anna Christina hasn't been starting every game next to Irina Fedorovseva because that is clearly, clearly their best lineup configuration, the one that won them everything that they won last year. Anna Christina and Fedorovseva on the left, and Melissa Vargas on the right. I, I expect that's what we're going to see. But I mean, you went on the road to a German team and lost, and then you didn't start Anna Christina in the return leg. So I've got a couple questions here. Once again, Stoogery from German coach, or sorry, Turkish coaches. That's that's that's. Do they have a Turkish coach? No, it's Lavarini. He's a oh no, it's Lavarini. We were just talking about that. Sorry, duh, my bad. Um, but like, let's be honest. I've never really been a huge fan of Lavarini either. Like, it's it's just. I think that we have a, a a pandemic in volleyball of terrible coaching. I I, I really do. I, I I really do. Too many of our coaches suck, um, and I think I think we should I think we should change that. But massive win. Her return is massive. We've got some people saying in the chat that she also dropped eighteen against Vakif Bank this weekend in the Sutanar League. So yeah, she did. Better watch <laughs> it. Did. Melissa Vargas is gross. Yeah, um, she's really good. But 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 you're right. Like, who do they have in the next round again? Who, Malonza. Who? Malonza. Vargas versus Agoni. Wow. Yes. Okay. Somebody, somebody just yeah. put in the chat that yes, uh, you're, you're right. That the four best opposites on the planet are all um, are all in this in the semifinal, which is amazing. One of those is Tiana Boschkovic, who Ooh. basically put Idzajabasha directly on her back. And carried them over Scandici. I, I thought that Scandici was going to win this match in four. It really looked like they were about to. Zaja Masha made a pretty miraculous late comeback to win the fourth. And uh, a, a little mini run in the middle of the fifth. Exclusively on Tiana Boscovich's shoulders. That helped them win the fifth and not even need to go to a golden set. Uh, this was... This this basically, what to me, was Tiana Boscovich being the best player on either team. And that that was the difference in the series because I wouldn't say any other player on either team played overwhelmingly well. No, no, n- n- not and not maybe Sim Gayakos, Sorry, the libero. Maybe. Oh, I would disagree with that. I, I didn't think she was all that good in in game number two. I, I, I def- definitely at times, I think she got better over over the game the game. But I, I thought that when when she was struggling, Exhaust Basha was was struggling. Um, I know I watched this game, Rob, and I know it. Like I, I saw it all happen, and I watched it. But when I look at this stat sheet, I wonder how the hell Exhaustion Basha won. Because like, when you look at <laughs> kind of the all same thing five, about, like, all, 
all five attackers from Scandici were in double digits and not just little double double digits. Antropova and Zhu Ting had 19. Also, let's just say like that was a that was like a 2018 Zhu Ting we saw out there. Yeah, like, she looks she way better. Looked way better. Way better. Antropova Zhu Ting with, with 19. Um Haley Washington decided to show up for the first time in a while. She had 17, 16 Five for blocks. yeah, 16 for Bert, Britt Herbots and 13 for uh, uh Anna Carolina with six blocks as well. Um just a massive day for Scandici, but you're right. Boscovich was way better. Um she was she was really struggling and she didn't have much help down the stretch from her teammates. Um I think Sinead, like Sinead Jack Casal was the most consistent player for um, Exasha Basha. She's just a force down the mis- middle, and I love watching her play. And I think Alexa was better in the second half of the match. And maybe that's what helped them just give them a bit of an edge to kind of push, o- push over the top in it. Yeah, the there were a couple key moves made by Zajibasha that really helped this that helped them get this thing over the finish line. One was bringing back Elif Shaheen as a starting setter. Yeah. If she if she was healthy enough to play, I was shocked that she didn't start. I mean, we saw her roll her we saw her roll her ankle in leg one. Yeah. I was shocked that that if she was available, that she wasn't the starting setter. But uh, she made a big difference when she came in. Jovana Stevanovic made a big difference when she came in. I was surprised that she didn't play a little bit earlier. And then Irina Voronkova in for Hande Baladin and outside was it was a total game changer. Find I don't somebody else don't, who can actually kill the ball. But like last week when they were really good, they started Voronkova and and Alexa Gray. I, I don't know why they're insisting to play Hande Baladin in, in in that situation. Me neither. Right? Like, uh, I, 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 I really, I really don't get it. Like, especially with those two players, like Hande Baladin comes off the bench real well. She, she, she does that real well. Like, I almost think she comes off the bench better than she is as a starter. Um. So yeah, it was very interesting that they had to wait all the way to the third to see Vronkova. But you know what? Who knows? Yeah, I didn't really get that. But uh, at, at the end of the day, this is Tiana Boskovic proving that she is s- still a player that can single-handedly win you a Champions League series because that's basically what happened. Like, she got every ball in the fifth set. Let me look at set five stats specifically and just the number of attempts. Yeah, no no surprise at all. Six for nine with no errors in the fifth. Nobody else got more than three balls. So, like, she she did it all. She did it all, and she will have to do it all, and that's just her job. Uh, across the net, Antropova, uh, only four, no, sorry, six points in the fifth, five for 10 with two errors. So uh, just not quite as good down the stretch in a tie-breaking game. The other thing that th- it's kind of a miracle, it's Ajibasha. So the the serving numbers are listed as 13 aces for Scandici to 13 service errors, which is insane. Those are men's numbers. But I even worse, yeah. Is that it's Ajabasha is being credited with 20 receiving errors. So they get ace 13 times, then they have seven other balls that are for some reason being classified as receiving errors. I'm not sure what that exactly means. Maybe it's an overpass, maybe it's like a, a shank that's barely able to be brought back and sent over as a free ball. I'm not sure how that's tracked, but the reception for it's Ajabasha was terrible and, he, yeah. and even sim gayakos I, I praised her too early because she was so good in leg one she got a seven times or yeah. she, she made seven reception errors and that and that that once again like that's where like i didn't see i know she made a few big digs but serve receive like almost 50 percent of the balls that got served her were aces yeah, in, and in that's that not case, acceptable which is which is not acceptable I mean, a, a, absolutely not um big story here the fact that exhaust basha lost both of their matches to skanjichi in in pool play Right in the group stage, it was yeah. two nothing for for Scandici, but in this one, like it was, it, it was like the 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 master was still the master. Boscovich is still one of the best, and Antropova is still not quite there. She's she's not quite quite there. And even on a day where Zhu Ting plays like in a in a mint form and her bots is good and the rest of the team, it still wasn't enough there for uh for Scandici. So that, that's gonna be e- interesting. Uh especially yeah. since like Barbellini is gone after this year because he's going to uh League Correct. One. Correct. He's going to League One. Yeah that we'll see that actually might be a bit of a blessing in disguise. But yeah that this this Champions League to me so far, like or at least this quarterfinal round, because it's finally when we get all the good teams on the women's side playing each other, has proven to me that there is even more of a gap than we thought between the top four opposites in the world and the next. Oh, yeah. 
and I mean, we Oskovich, we Hake, Gonu, Vargas yeah. are much, much, much better than Stisiak, Entropova, Thompson, Thank maybe you, Abra Karakert, uh, whatever she's doing in Russia, Kira Van Rijk, like whoever else is in that next group. Yep. Huge drop off. And it, it pr- kind of further proves to me that if you want to win a major tournament in the year 2024, club or international, you must have one of four players. Yep. And all four of those players are playing in or this a player of, of that caliber. And that's and that is the women's football is right now. And I mean, we can jump in right into uh, one of the other matches that, that featured two of two of the best uh, out, uh, opposites there and how Isabel Hawk and Canigliano absolutely handled Vakif Bank. And I mean, hey, Not first Brazil. set. Yeah, first set looked like Vakif Bank had a little fight with them. They made a couple adjustments and Canigliano just absolutely ran through them. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even entertaining to watch. They kept them <laughs> under 20 in all three sets. True, truly. Like, you know, honestly, you're right. I'm laughing because you're right. It was not they, they, they play such pretty volleyball that it's just not entertaining to watch. It's it, it, it's <laughs> it's just it's just the way they go. Like pretty much they are and so well prepared. Um yeah. Like I I mean, we told you, we, we told you last week, we told you the week before that, that Cunning Liano straight after, like two days after winning the Coppa Italia was going to go to Turkey and have no problem. Then they did, and we were right. And then we said again that you don't even need to bother watching the second leg of this, and we were right again. Cunning Liano is infinitely better. Uh, Daniele Santarelli is head and shoulders better than every other coach in all of volleyball men's or women's yes and uh, and vakif bank has serious serious problems you mentioned earlier that they got uh kind of stomped by fenerbahce over the weekend i mean when's the last time you saw jordan thompson have a good match nine for 22 with seven errors is, Dude, is kind of terrible when you look at the stats here gabby led things for vakif bank with 13 points kelsey robinson was the fourth top scorer for canigliano with 13 points hawk had 19 16 for plumber 15 for far 13 for kelsey robinson whereas like i know they they, they like they played the fact that they played Oh wait, no, never, never mind. We know why they played a completely different different team in in that fourth set, but still, like this Vakif Bank team just doesn't have it right now. Nope, and they don't, and and and, and they yeah. never did against Corneliano. Like that, that that was that was never going to be a series like that. No, the, look look at that balance. Like look at Sarah Farr, who's I, I just love watching her play so much because of what all all the knee injuries that she's gone through to get to this point 15 for a middle i mean 10 for 14 with a, an ace and four stuff blocks it's amazing like that that's that's more points than anybody on vodka bank's entire team from a middle blocker like come on yep. the, the, these these two teams are in are in different different levels of the atmosphere and the level of volleyball that they can play and i mean like i know it's been talked about a lot in in the I mean, I know people are bringing it up in the chat, and it's been talked about a lot in the Discord. There needs to, we need to have a chat about Zara Gunesh. Like one for seven with two errors is not good enough. Her like four errors, the, four errors from the baseline is not is not good enough. Ever, you got to be real careful. The Turkish people are going to find you and murder you for saying such a thing because her and they'll come to her defense and and just and shout from the mountaintops that she has a shoulder injury. Hundred percent, but like that's that's then something needs to be done about that. I agree. She, she I needs agree. to be, stop playing, right? And that's that's if if that's the case, if she has a shoulder injury, and then that's what we we've been told, then she shouldn't be on the court. I'm I not agree. saying this is her fault. I'm not saying this is on her shoulders. I'm saying this is the mismanagement of Guidetti once again. And I think Guidetti is really good at managing a, a bunch of top level athletes who know how to self motivate and 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 you know gear themselves up see but... look the chat's already coming for you the, the turkish people in the chat are already coming for you i told you but yeah, yeah well, i i get the like, same I... thing with melissa vargas i mean you have olympic gold to win this summer turkish yeah. federation if you're if you're one of your if arguably the best middle blocker in the world is clearly not healthy enough and is and is going yeah one for seven with two errors and and just being useless in a champions league game do the right thing prioritize the olympics and get her off the court for a couple months. Yeah, come on. Let's give something to Magdalena Stesiak, please. She deserves it. She deserves it. How does she pop in? How does she pop into those elite if you guys never give her a chance? Like she's she to me is, is truly like the, the fifth best uh opposite in the world. I think Stisiak um, is five. I I've, I mean Karakert yeah. I don't really consider anymore because she's playing outside hitter on the national team and I haven't seen her play club since Novara. 
So I, I don't know where to put that. But Stisiak is definitely a better player right now than Jordan Thompson, even though Thompson yeah. for some reason started over all of last year for Malone. So like that's uh it's it's interesting. It's like and there'll be a lot of storylines about this when we come to national team season. But for right now, like Coneliano is better in literally every phase and at every single position than Vakith Bank. And it was obvious to see when you watch this series. Yeah, it, it is. Um, do we need to talk about the other one, the other matchup there? No. Malone's a three dong and Vlodge. Thank you very much. Have a cookie. Thank you for participating. I don't hate those jerseys as much as you do, Rob. Oh, they're think, so bad. I think oh they're God, bad they're from horrific. far, but when you see them up close, I kind of like them. They're horrific. They're they're uh, the worst in all of volleyball. I hate them so much. Uh, yes, Malonza will take on Fenerbahce in the next series, uh, and then it's Adjabasha against Corneliano. I actually love the fact that we're that we're crossing the countries in both those series. I yeah, me too. Me, I would much I would much rather cross the countries um, in this way, and I, it, it's it's a real toss. I think it's gonna be Canigliano and and Fenerbahce. Um, I think so too. But we we do have a week to wait on our picks because we're we're yeah. gonna get get to these on next week's show. But this is what we wanted. This is what women's volleyball fans should have wanted. This is the four best opposites in the world on four different teams in the Champions League semifinals, and all of them are going to play against each other from here on out. That rules. <laughs> That's oh, so geez. awesome. That's I love that. so good. I'm so excited about it. It's amazing. Yeah, it is beautiful. All right, right. moving right along. Uh, Plenty more CEV to talk about. We will move a little bit faster here. Talk about CEV Cup and CEV Challenge Cup. First of all, men's CEV Cup. Rosovia kicked the crap out of Fenerbahce in the two sets that mattered, 17 and 14, and then the series was over. Good for them. They will go to the CEV Cup final. I don't think we need to talk about this anymore, Everett. Do you? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, we do need to talk about... I was, Sorry, real quick. I was just going to say it's crazy how well Fenerbahce is doing in the Efrela League. Um, like, they might be a Champions League team next year, and they are getting slapped in the CEV Cup. So Great point. That, that's, that's one thing to watch. But we absolutely need to talk about that other one because Lundberg laid an egg in, in the Champions League. There's no doubt about that. They could have been a team in the playoffs. And you know what? They may have even. I, I'm not going to say they laid laid an egg in the first round, but that would they, they had a tough. Kind of did. Their reception was horrendous. But this one was just an absolute masterpiece at home. They win the match in four, force the golden set, take it on that man right there, who roars was he was on another level. He was Amazing. making plays. He was running running to the crowd like after they. They, they they came back and won it. What was that? What was it? The third? They came they, back no, and won the third and, and forced a. Yeah, the 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 thir- when they I think they blocked a ball to win the third and yeah. he's running around the crowd and then he hits a he pounds a bick to win the golden set immediately jumps into the stands. This was absolutely beautiful. This was yeah. like chills down your spine stuff as a, as a sports fan watching Lundberg come back and win this series with that home crowd and that atmosphere. It, I'm I'm getting chills right now talking about it. It was it, it was it was one of the- one of my favorite matches I've seen in, in years. It was incredible. So, yeah. That's exactly it's exactly what I was gonna say say too. Uh oh, 23 points awesome. for Eric Roars, 23 points for my boy Jesse Elser. Let's go, Jelser. Incredible uh, match from Jelser. He, so oh, that good. one ball that he hit on two. Um, yes, I love from, that out of from the, the back yeah, row the was room. was was absolutely fantastic. I talked about how bad Gage was in the first match, and I messaged you halfway through this match, and I, was, I said, I hope Out of System has a camera person at this one, because Gage has been unreal. He was awesome. He, dug, was a, he dug Grozer down the line seven. Straight up, just, like, strapping it on, leave the gap. You could tell that, like, I, I could tell that Gage was like, I want this matchup. Yeah. I want Grozer down the line, because he was there, and he was, like, balls to the walls, ready to strap it on, and I, I absolutely loved it. This was, was a... Uh, it was a game through and through. Um, and it must have been an interesting game for Glenn Hogue, if I can take a Canadian angle for one second, because here you are getting beat by a team in the in the, the CEV Cup semifinals. You have one of the legends in the sport on your team, and Greg Rozier, who was unreal. He did have 23 in this one, uh, went 21 for 42 um, with, with two blocks. But you lose to a team that has that features three Canadians, none of whom are really featured on the national team, 
right? Like, I, I hope that Glenn Hogue has it takes the chance to like take a step back and be like, Max Elgert's like our fourth setter, Jesse Elser's like our fifth or sixth, maybe seventh outside, depending who you ask. Xander Kaczynski hasn't been, a, wasn't around last year in the program, and yet. All three of them featured massively in this match. So I hope that Glenn Ho can take a step back and be like, you know what? Like, I may have lost this match, but ultimately I've won. Yeah, because he, he, he built a Canadian program that runs way deeper than just the 14 on the national team. So that's, there's definitely something to be said for that. I mean, uh, also credit to several of the Americans playing in this game. I mean, you already talked about Gage Worsley, how good he was. Yeah. Matt Niggy is low-key one of the best middles I've seen in Europe this year. His He's had an amazing season. 14 points in this one with five blocks. Uh, Blake Leeson off the bench, really good as well. Had a, had a, had two huge solo blocks in the golden set that helped him win it. And just the, the mental fortitude for Lundberg as a team because they got donged hard on the road last week. Mm-hmm. And they got crushed in the first set in this match like they go down in the series 0 to 4 in sets i mean it was 25 17 and yeah, they sure. knew they had no choice the only way they could come back from that was to turn it around and go 4 and 0 in and, sets and, and they you, did on the on a dime it was amazing i really think that i think that lundberg gym is starting to prove to be tough to play in because that's two world-class teams that they've bought, beat in the past two years. And I mean, I know they, they messed up quite a bit at home uh, in, the, in the Champions League, but they've now beaten Modena and Arcus. If, if you had told me in the 2010s that Lundberg would be beating Modena and Arcus, I would have kicked you in the face. Um, right? Like, that that's unreal. Like, that <laughs> new gym that they have there for, for Lundberg is, is unreal. The vibes are immaculate. And the boys are ready to go. So, yeah, I can't wait to watch them uh, in the finals against this. Like, Lundberg against Rosovia. That's such awesome. a random, random I ass love title. <laughs> I like, love it so much. Dude, how awesome is that for, like, all of those young guys? Like, the content coming out of Out of System on the away. Like, if they don't have a camera person, send Jake or wh- whoever it is. Get them to Poland. Get them to Rosovia. Like you, you, you love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the love thing: to see it. that final series, uh, Lundberg actually kind of gets gets a tough draw here because they play the first leg at home. Yeah, they have to go to Rosovia for the second leg. I mean, that, and, that's that's how it should be. Like, let's let's be honest. Yeah, like, we, we want Lundberg you know to win they, here, but Rosovia is the favorite. Yeah, they are. It would uh, obviously surely Lundberg would have would have preferred it to to be the opposite way. But I I cannot wait for that series. And Lundberg, I saw it on their Instagram. The as soon as they won the, this match, as soon as they won this golden set against Argus, and as soon as it was confirmed the dates and scheduling for Rosovia, they sold out that first leg instantly. Instant instant sellout they're gonna pack that house again next week i hope so. uh, it's hope it's so next loud. it's next tuesday it's a week from today i'm so excited to watch it love it love it yeah it was it was an exciting match this man right here eric roars is is oh he was so good he was so di- good. dynamite MVP. dynamite to watch so yeah absolutely love it um from one rob let's let's jump over to the women's side from one upset to another yes new chatel out of switzerland um was able to did they win the 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 golden set here they did so yeah. they, they they lost three to one to budovani Woods at home and then won a golden set 15 13 i actually went and did a lot of digging about this because i i didn't watch any of this series i wasn't expecting there to be drama with a swiss team playing a polish team who got third in their pool in champions league and dropped down but uh similar man neuchatel similar home atmosphere to lundberg they played this second leg at home. The, that crowd, like uh, Everett, I'll, I'll send you their Instagram and send you this post that I, a bunch of this stuff that no, I saw. Of, of, so I follow the reactions. Them oh, yeah. My it was awesome. It looked amazing in there. Yeah. So I, I follow them a lot because of Lauren Bertolacci, who's, who's their coach. Mm. So she spent some time with the Canadian women's national team. She's out of Australia. So that's why, like, her and Shannon Windsor know, know each other pretty well. But she's an up and coming coach that I've been watching for, for a little bit. And dude, she's a baller. Like I, I think she's one of those those like those female coaches, and like we've talked about the the lack of female representation amongst coaching ranks, and she's one who's out there just just making it happen. And I think after a win like this, bigger bigger teams are going to start to start to look. And I think we need we, we were just talking about it. Like we need an infusion of young young coaches, and I think like I, I know I. 
well, I always want to say Lauren Berto, but I'm going to say her full, na- full name of Lauren Bertolacci uh, because on, on Instagram, she's Lauren Berto and I, I follow her on there. But um, I, I think that that's a massive win. I mean, this, this is a, a heavily Americanized roster too. You got one, two, three, yeah. four, four Americans on this team. Yep, it's awesome. Uh, great atmosphere, and this is like this is the cool stuff about CEV competitions is when you have a team from a random little country like uh, like Switzerland, for example. I can't remember when the last time a, a Swiss team was in a European final in any competition. Like it's it's awesome. It's yeah. great. It's what, it's what the competition is all about, and uh, they will take on Kieri in the final, which we. Uh, we're not surprised by uh, Kerry did beat uh, Paris Saint Cloud in the in the in a three dong in Paris. Good match, good series. Uh, Kerry definitely the better team. I mean, we'll we'll see if uh, if Nia Chattel can replicate that magic. I think they also play the first leg at home next week. Uh, next week Wednesday. Yeah, sounds good. It, I think that that'll be a good one. I mean, Kerry. I like Kieri, so this this will be a fun one to watch. I think New Chateau yeah, will, will will put up a good a good uh, a good resistance, but I don't know if they're going to be able to handle Kieri. That's good. To yeah, maybe not. That, that's that's a big firepower difference. Yeah, and New Chateau has been like the top. I'm like looking through. They've they've basically been the top of uh, the Swiss league now for a long long. Yeah, they, time. they've they've dominated that league for a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of surprised that they don't get a Champions League spot. Like they the- did, they did back in 2021, 22. Hmm. yeah but i think i think you need to like you know work work your work your way up on the yeah on however that it is yeah all right last but not least uh we can quick we can do women's first on the cv challenge cup congratulations to novara novara wins the cv challenge cup on the women's side this is was not very surprising they did beat nant in the final uh let's what was it three was it three one on the road if i remember right I'm trying to pull back the Pull back the match results. Yeah, three one on the road. Uh, Novara was the the best team in this tournament on the women's side. This was uh, not really super dramatic, although the first leg was was kind of good. Yeah, Novara, good for them. Uh, they've got uh, they've got a, a good bit of young talent in Marina Markova, Vita Akimova, mm-hmm. Katarina Bosetti on the left, of course. Uh, they're good down the middle. Uh, Fersino is a very good libero. Good for them. They get some hardware, and that's kind of all I have to say about it. Yeah, I love watching Akimova and Markova. Markova is going to be Markova is going to be something special. She's super good. Yeah, like, six, we, we, six long outside hitter. Yeah, were, were we discussing it on the show, or was that like kind of off camera about? I like think it was how, our I think it was our little watch along thing we did when they were playing. Oh, yeah, that's exactly we were discussing about how good Russia would be if you look at like Federer, Seva, <laughs> Akimova, Markova, um, all the other us ovas playing in, uh, <laughs> playing around. It's it's very interesting about how there's essentially there's like one Russian player playing outside of Russia on the men's side, and there's so many Russian players playing outside of Russia on the women's side. It's, yeah, it is. It's, it is it, interesting. It's it's an interesting di- uh, dynamic. But yeah, good up for uh, Novara. Um, they or they they deserve it. Yep, a trophy for yeah, them. Probably. Also a trophy, um, Everett. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Vero Volley Canada comes up just short. Congratulations to Project Varshava. One of I, would, the best I don't teams know if you call it just short. Yeah, they came up pretty well short, <laughs> in, yeah. at least in the final series. Varshava was much, much better than Monza in both legs. They absolutely deserve to win this tournament. It was really cool to see Yuri Semenyuk, old veteran Ukrainian middle blocker. I think he, he made a comment, something like that this is the first tournament he's actually won in over a decade mm. which wow. is amazing so uh good for him good for this team they they were better than monza they deserved it uh they went Bol- up to, they went, up Bol- went 11 for 15 sheesh <laughs> Two yeah, they get, sets. get their starting opposite back and he balls out how about that and yeah just 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 disappointing disappointing for monza that they, they beat a lot of good teams on the way and uh just couldn't really hang couldn't really hang with Vershava in the final so Rob, in watching this, I've I've come to a conclusion, and I think that conclusion is the Plus Liga is better than the Super Liga, and I think that is mainly due to the quality of the Polish players. When you look at Polish players who aren't on the national team, who are on teams like Warszawa and Zawierci and JW, like also, you know, like when you go through all of it, there's players who make massive impacts in the Plus Liga who will never see a national team 
a national team jersey who could start for top national teams around the world. Bolaj and, and Butrin could start for Italy hands down any day of the week. Yep. Right. They're... When when you look at the quality that's coming in, there's there's no doubt about it. Poland is the deepest country in the world. They they produce the the best the best products. We saw Zavirci handle Milano. We saw uh, Warsaw destroy Monza. We saw JW embarrass Piacenza. Like the the list just goes goes on and on. We've seen three straight um three straight Champions Leagues go to the Plus Liga and I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again this year with uh, with JW. I you know what? I agree with you. I I I think it's official. I think we can go ahead and proclaim it. Right now, this is March fifth, twenty twenty four. The Plus Liga is officially, according to us, the best league in the world on the men's side, and I, and I think that your reasoning is is spot on. The yep. Polish players that populate all the teams from one through sixteen, because remember, there's there's four more teams in the Plus Liga, and there's one less foreigner spot per team. Yeah, the, the they they rely even more on their domestic talent that isn't at the top, including the national team, than with, Italy with, does. And those teams, yeah, uh, somebody in the chat says that the top 12 teams in the Plus Liga are way better from 1 through 12 than the entirety of the Super Lega's 12 teams. I totally yeah. agree with that. And it, there's a possibility that Poland could, on the men's side, could sweep all three European trophies this year. Right? They've already got the Challenge oh, Cup. Man. They've, they could, they are very well probably going to unless Rosovia pulls a classic Rosovia move they will get the CEV cup and JW is a very strong contender to get the the the, the Champions League wow and and I mean Italy on the women's side same thing I mean they got it they got Novaras they they, mm-hmm. they will be favored to get Kieri's CEV cup and they I mean Coneliano is probably their best chance at Champions League but that 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 could easily happen that's Definitely. very interesting but yeah I, I mean I think I think there's better coaching in the Plus Liga. I, I think, agree with that. Yeah, and you know what, Joe just said it in the chat. I think the Plus Liga is much more palatable than than the uh, than the Italian league. You know, I find myself better, watching. Yeah, better I broadcasts, find. much better scheduling. For God's yeah. sakes, we'll talk about Italy in a second. But they they're they're kicking off the playoffs tomorrow with all four matches at the same goddamn time. There's, there's, there's the Plus Liga has a, a top down clear vision. Super Liga is still a bunch of random teams running amok and doing whatever the right. they want. Unfortunately, yeah. there's more mo- Unfortunately for Poland, there's still more money in Italy, and that, that's not going to change anytime soon. But I think I agree. Let's go ahead and say it. The Plus Liga is the best men's club volleyball league in the world. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Congrats to Vershava, by the way. I think that's yep. their first trophy in team history. Awesome. Love to see love to see that. Is it? I think it yeah. is. Like they, they they've never was... won any like the Polish little domestic tournaments before. Yeah, I think you're and right. I know it's I know it's Challenge Cup, but like still, still you I mean you went out and won the tournament and you beat good teams on the way and uh this they played good ball and it was fun to watch. Good for them. Fair enough. Um Rob, there is I do want to touch on something non-volleyball related that has come up recently um we've talked a lot about the format of the cev champions league and how ultimately it's kind of garbage right we spend like it's it's exciting now but most of the time it sucks right no one wants to see the one versus four matches in any of the pools there's not enough there's, there's not enough parity right and we've also always talked about how volleyball has no we're not creative at all we have no traditions on which to base anything. And we just like to be the little brothers of soccer. We just like to do what soccer does. Um, I've been calling for a long time to make kind of a tiered system. Let's bring all the three competitions again into almost a ladder system where you can move up and down, beat teams, move up, lose to teams, move down. And you know what? The good teams will stay playing the good teams. And the, the lesser good teams will stay playing the lesser good teams. That's, that's, that's what we want. Well, the good people over at UEFA heard my calls and they knew that what they would do would later on impact the CEV, not anytime soon, probably in like 10 and 15 years, because that's kind of the timeline that we work within in, in volleyball. But just recently, just yesterday, the UEFA Champions League announced a whole new restructuring to their three-tiered 
champion system, much like we have in volleyball. I wonder where we got it from. Um, <laughs> into a super league that will be basically making little leagues with upward and downward movement tiers. Um, this is this is amazing. I absolutely awesome. love. I absolutely love that because we know that the Stooges and the CEV in like ten years time will be like. You see what they've been doing over there at the uh, the UEFA Champions League, eh? Maybe, maybe we should check that out. Yeah, and maybe at the same time we should be start broadcasting things in 100, 1080p. You know, <laughs> I, I know the world is now on ultra super HD at at twelve K, but we can bump it up to ten eighty now. I think it'll actually be a little bit faster than you think. I think that the the CEV takes so much. And the volleyball takes so much from soccer. This, I think, will trickle down rather quickly. But it's a fantastic idea. The only things I've I've ever complimented soccer on ever are the thing the things that they do with tournament format and obviously the pageantry and and the fandom and the storytelling and all that because their on their on field product is the worst in all of sports and it's not even close. But the format of this I love and I really hope that it comes to volleyball. I think that it would work similarly fantastically well in European volleyball where you get games like like Monza versus Warsaw. And like that, that we that we had to wait the entire Challenge Cup tournament to see a series like that, or like Lundberg, a, a you know a, a German team punching above its weight class, waiting until the semifinals to see them play a series like that against against Arcus Izmir. Like stuff like that is going to happen more under the the same the format that the UEFA just put out the other day, and I love it, and I hope we get it soon. Yeah, like imagine if you had a pool basically with just Italian and Polish and some of the best Turkish teams and Russian teams when they come back and there's meaningful games every week that people actually wanted to watch. Meaningful of, is the key word in, there. It's like in, Women's in, Champions League, dude. Women's Champions League, like these these poor, like a, a Romanian team, for example, having to travel halfway across, or like a, a Finnish team. I think I think Vakif Bank went up to Finland this year in pools or something like that. Yeah. They had to travel all that way just to beat down a team 25-12 in all three sets and fly home. And then vice versa. The Finnish team would have to fly all the way to Turkey to get destroyed. And like all that stuff sucks. And this is going to, assuming that it trickles its way down to volleyball sooner or later, this is going to get rid of useless matches and give us more awesome matches. The chat isn't isn't some other isn't on it with this. And like we're not like we're not deleting the other the other competitions, right? Like the the whole point would be to have them compete against meaningful competitions. Right. Have right. French teams compete against German teams so you get meaningful matches. No one goes to the matches when when Vakif Bank or Canigliano plays the lesser teams, right? Let's let let's let those other teams let's let's let those other teams compete against meaningful competition where that people actually want to watch. Right, I'm so much more interested in watching Valero Le Canet play against Stuttgart than yeah. I am against either of them playing playing against Malonza, because those those big matches only happen once in a blue moon, right? And I still think you're gonna you're gonna get those you're still gonna get those opportunities you're gonna see those those chances but you're gonna see more interplaying. Yeah, I agree, and it's it's not like we're taking opportunities away from people. I think still that like every single country in Europe should get bare minimum one, like the same distribution of teams. No, that, that, you're that, not. That, yeah, that, you're not lessening any teams. No, 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 maybe, no, no, no. maybe you add. Maybe Increase. you add. It. Yeah, I agree. Add <laughs> add more maybe, teams. Maybe you add a few more in for sure. Yeah, but, but they'll they'll be able to get sorted out to be playing like competition faster, mm -hmm. faster than they do now. That's the key. Yeah, I'm all for it. Guag Guaguas only went to the quarterfinal because they had a shit pool in the first place. Like one of the worst Gu pools in Champions League history. <laughs> Guaguas didn't have, like, like, right? And it's that kind of unlevel play that we have in pool play that absolutely sucks. It comes down to the, the luck of the draw, right? Rather than right. playing against teams that 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 you're you're never going to have a Cinderella story. When's the last time we had a Cinderella story? The biggest Cinderella story that we had was in like when Bra when Berlin got a bronze in 2017 and they hosted at home, right? Like that's the biggest Cinderella story we've had in in Champions League volleyball. I've been watching Champions League now for over a decade. There's never once been a Cinderella story. Zaxa is a Cinderella story, right? In their first year beating Lube and and, and beating right. those teams. That's that a Cinderella sense. story. Because th now th this is a problem with sports in on all of Europe because they don't have a salary cap and money buys success. Yes, of course, Italy, Turkey, Poland, like the, these are the stronger teams because they have more money and they can pay better players. Like hey, Brakai Br 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 saying in the chat that he's like, like, 
um, Zach Samoko, Trentino comes to Slovenia, Finland, Spain is a huge deal. It's not. No, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not. We no, never sell out those games. No. I go back and I I challenge anyone who has volleyball TV, go watch the home matches for the lesser countries when they're playing their big teams. They are empty. No one cares. No one wants to watch their team get shit kicked. Right? When and and the flip side, the, the gyms for the big teams are empty too. Like Champions League has to be a money losing venture for the majority of the big teams because nobody wants to see you play. Like there is one, you play what three home matches and you play one match that's good, right? One match that's that's worth anything, right? I I guarantee someone who has volleyball or sorry not volleyball world TV, somebody who has Euro Volley TV. I go back or you can see it in the uh, in the stat sheets. Go back and look at look at the attendance for the home matches for the teams in Spain, for the teams in Finland, for the teams in Slovenia. Shit attendance, shit attendance, because no one wants to go watch their team go, go get shit shit kicked. I'm I'm all for it. I, I'm I'm completely all for it, and we'll see how long it takes. To... Like you guys are saying, the last the the last st- like like Cinderella run was Casa Maggiore. Yeah, that was another Italian years. league team. Yeah. Like fuck off, guys! Yeah, what are we talking about here? Yeah, there, there's, and I think there's these people coming from Europe making all these comments don't really understand too that it's it's because of the way that sports are in Europe yeah. that the that there are so many different classifications of teams that when they play each other are not competitive. Yeah. Like this this format would not work in American sports because no. we have salary caps and there are guarantees. It's by, so it's so funny because narrow American- the competitive levels. North American sports are socialist, and uh, European sports are extremely capitalist, incredibly it's, capitalist. It's, yeah. it's, it's it's a very interesting dynamic to uh, to to look at when you when you consider that. But yeah, all right. Let's uh, let's move on. Before we move on to domestic news, uh, we got a couple things to talk about. The first is that volleyballstore.com. dot com. Everett, you're looking good over there. Uh, where can you oh. get where can you get a nice green crew neck like that? Looking good, feeling good, playing good. You head over to that volleyballstore.com and if you use the code SPICE, you'll get 15% off your entire coat. Yeah, your entire your entire order. Yep, spicy. Uh we love the spicy hot pepper. We love the 9 by 9 squared collection. We love the Where's Daddy collection. Daddy. Head over to that volleyballstore.com if you love Daddy Stankovich as much as we do. You can also participate by by participate, gracias por participar, by playing the Where's Daddy segment because we hide Daddy Stankovic in every show. Uh, if you find him, you get to comment a timestamp of where he is, and if you are the first to do so, you get a shout out. Last week, we were talking about the first leg of Lundberg versus Arcaspor, and you see there uh, Daddy Stankovic selling, celebrating with his Arcus teammates. Man, Daddy really gets around. He really plays on a lot of different teams. It's pretty impressive. So yeah, there's Daddy. This was actually a, a a deceptive hiding job by Mia. That not not as many of you found him as usual, but uh, really? Martin, yeah, Martin Johnson was the first one to find him. Uh, not as many people commented as usual. I guess I'll take that as a compliment. But yeah, keep your eye out for Daddy Stankovic because uh, he's beautiful and it makes my day whenever I see him. If you see him somewhere in the show, wait till the live stream is over. Comment the timestamp of where he is in the main YouTube comment section after the show's over, and you'll get a shout out next week. Also, Burkai, you just you just said that Guagua sold out uh, every one of their matches. The last match in pool play at home against GW, they sold two thousand tickets for a stadium that holds fifty five hundred. <laughs> so you're not even getting to fifty percent. <laughs> oh, Burkai, figure it out. Come at me, bro. Come at me. That's why we have a show and some of you don't. All right, let's move on. Um, before we talk about Italy, because there's a lot to get to at the Super Lega, I want to issue a huge congratulations to Alaron Varta Zavierce. I think that this is the first trophy in their club's history because they won the Polish Cup, which is a big deal. They beat JSW 3-1 to one in the final in front of 14,000 people. In what I think is the largest crowd in club volleyball history, is that right? It in is. Krakow, yeah, that Amazing. that is it is the the last yeah in Polish club volleyball history, um, it is the largest crowd ever. So you'd love to see it. Um, I missed the match live uh, yesterday, or sorry, on Sunday because Sunday was, real early for North Americans. Yeah, it was it was like eight thirty. I was real hungover. I was like sweating alcohol when I was coaching on on Sunday during the day. 
But luckily, uh, after watching the the Nissa versus uh, Lublin game, it came on. So I was like, sweet. I, I watched a little bit. Zavierci was really, really good inside out. Really, really efficient inside out. Um, and that that to me was was just the big story. Like they were just out there, just scoring, at almost almost at will. Um, when you have Quolek and Klevno playing as well as they do like that, oh, it's it's a lot of fun to watch. It is Kolek a lot of fun. Was to watch. Awesome man. I he, mean, he was great. Seventeen points, forty eight percent efficiency, and a pretty good reception. That that's that's sweet. And uh, I I wouldn't say Carl Butchman was even that good. I mean, no. 12 points, 10 for 26. That's yeah, that, that's that's just okay. Uh Cleveno was good. Mateusz Biniak was good. Uh Luke Perry is easily a top five libero on the planet, if not still. higher than that. Yep. Uh still, yeah, that that hasn't changed. For JSW, uh Jean Patry was incredible. I said, I said when we were talking about Champions League that he has been their best player the last several weeks. I mean, he went 17 for 26, 57% efficiency. That's insane. Um, Tomas Farnal was okay, not great, but uh, Rafael Shimura showing a good bit of weakness, and Norbert Huber was just okay. And maybe there was a fatigue factor there because JSW played Wednesday against Piacenza. They played the, I think, I mean, they, they got past Luke Lublin. They had an easier semifinal than Xavier Che did, but yeah. uh, from the little bit that I saw, they did look a little bit out of gas in the final. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit, but. Uh... I thought just Zavieci was was dominating, and I think yeah, they're just you know, better. We go back to the being the year where you thought Zavieci was kind of going to be a team, and we're starting to see that. Love to see Cam Cooper, Sam Cooper, still still kick, kick, kicking around over there. Oh, is he is he back on the roster after his surgery? No, so no, he's no. never he never left. He like he okay. had surgery there, and he's never left the team. Okay, so he's, good. He's, he's continued to be around, which which I which oh, I yeah. love. So that means see him they there see, in the photo. Yeah, they they see some they see some value in him, and they see. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Milos Zanisho was actually the MVP of this, which I'm really surprised by. He's their second middle across from Beniak. Went seven right? for nine, no errors, four blocks, eleven points. So that's pretty nice. But uh, I probably would have given that to Kvolak if it was my choice. But good for yeah. him. Him just once again shows shows that depth of Poland. Um, oh, yeah. Jumping over to uh, the Italian league, Rob. I have I have one I have one more thing to talk about. Oh, that's just yeah, kind of sorry, I, I just saw that. Yeah, yes, yeah. Let's 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 jump into. We want to talk about Zaxa. On yeah, a nice I do want little, to talk about Zaxa on a nice little four game run. They are, yeah. Zaxa's on a four game win streak. I'm sorry, I don't have a graphic for this, but they have climbed all the way up to seventh in the standings, uh, which is pretty nice. They they're they're tied at in points with Olsten at 38. There, but they've got them by two wins. Uh, which is actually kind of crazy. So uh, Zox is still very much alive with six games left to play in the regular season. And remember, the, the Plutz Liga changed their format this year. Now the, the first, I think it's the first two rounds are home and away, like Champions League style, which I, I honestly they think Zoxa in their current configuration is more likely to do, to do well in that than, uh, than a more traditional series. But the story, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because they've gone on this run mostly without Wukash Kaczmarek, mm. who for yes. some reason... And I really can't figure out why. I'm not even sure the Polish channel of the Discord can figure out why. He's just kind of stepped away from the team. He's just like not with the team for the stretch run as they try to make the playoffs. And I don't really understand that. And I can't really excuse that for a player like him. But I mean, I've I have talked about some of the issues I've had with his attitude in the past and I, I don't know if that's exactly what's happening here, but this is confusing for Zaxa, who's won three Champions Leagues in a row, is fighting just to even make the playoffs with all they've been through this year. And one of their best and most important players is just saying, like, nah, no, thank you. I'm not interested in being a part of it. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting, really interesting for Zaxa down the stretch, too. Um, they don't play until Sunday when they have Lublin again, but they have six matches left. Lublin, good. Um, uh, Gdansk, Vorshava, Survalki, Zavierci, and JW. So you wow, need, you, that you is need a to gauntlet. play a gauntlet of wow. teams, which is can either be good or bad. It's going to be bad, obviously, for Zaxa if they can't win and they get knocked out of the playoffs. But if they're able to get Kazmarek back, and like, let's be honest, I have not written off uh, Zaxa at all from the the plus league playoffs like maybe without the champions league and maybe to get some some time to rest and stuff like that they're going to be able to do some 
you know, make some make make a little bit more damage. But if they're able to have a decent run in that time, maybe steal a match from one of the three big teams, like that could be a chance for them to really gain some momentum and build something up b- before. Like this is a really interesting like metaphor metamorphosis time for Zoxa uh, right now. So it's going to be very interesting to see how how they can come back because this is like this is a bit of a wounded animal right and if they can find some momentum and something to rally behind that could get game that could get dangerous i think something that i said when we were talking about zoxa and champions league is that i will never ever count that team out until they until they are mathematically eliminated which right now they are not so still very much alive they do have a gauntlet but i'm really curious to hear uh, any more information that anybody might have about what the hell's going on with Lukash Kachmar because yep. uh, missing him in that situation is very interesting. All right, you want to talk about Italy? Yeah, let's 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 jump over to Italy where the playoff race is now set. And Rob, we can we can preview uh, definitely some of this. But I mean, man, this this is getting kicked off already tomorrow. tomorrow. Now, this first like there's some spicy matchups in here, and I I, abs- I absolutely love them. Um, Honestly, I think all of these are going to be interesting. Maybe not Perugia Verona. That one has the that the potential to be a bit of a stinker. Like Verona could potentially pop out. But now with this new Spertoli injury, Modena versus Trento is going to be an interesting and very sloppy series. It's quite it's going to sloppy. Be, it's going to be very sloppy, very interesting, very sloppy. Piacenza Milano, I think, is going to be an absolute dogfight. Can't wait. It, it's going to be two teams who. I'm not going to say they're built the same, but they they have kind of similar similar components. And then Lube versus Monza, that one's either going to be a runaway a runaway for Lube, or it's going to be a battle of a series. If Monza is able to dig in and be the good Monza, I think it'll be a battle. I I, I like Lube yeah. a lot more in Champions League than I do domestically. But yeah, the. The the Ricardo Spertoli injury definitely changes the landscape of the entire Scudetto playoffs at this point because no longer is Trentino the team to beat. That now, without question, belongs to Perugia. Now, if Trentino can get past Modena in the first round, which I do th- still think they are much better than them top to bottom, even with this Aquarona guy who's going to be their backup setter, then they get the winner of Lube and Monza. And, uh, I mean... Trentino's going to play Lube in Champions League in the next couple of weeks. And Trentino lost to Monza in the semifinal of the Coppa Italia, I think, if I remember right. So, like, and that was but with Ricardo Spertoli. So, anything is possible now. Trentino is way more beatable than they were, although I do still think that team, just the way they play and the way their systems work, their floor is high. I think even with a backup setter, their floor is still pretty high. Um, Perugia versus Verona, I agree with you, I think has real stinker potential. If Verona doesn't show up and we get some Stoogechev masterclasses and completely being unable to fight off Perugia's servers, which really scares me if you're a Verona fan. But Piacenza versus Milano is the series I have my eyes on the most. I am so excited to watch that. I'm so excited to watch that series. Yeah, I think that one is is going to be really interesting. I mean, I personally have my eyes on the, the Monza versus Lube series a little bit more. Monza is four and one against Lube over the past two years. Like wow. That that that, that that's something that probably most people aren't expecting. But yeah, they went two and oh against against the last year. Um two and one again against them this season. So this is a team that like this is a this is a series I think that could could go the distance. But you're right, Piacenza versus Milano. There's a lot of interesting. I I think I I'm excited to see what Milano can do after what they did last year. Can they turn it on and, and make a similar run that that they could last year, or can Piacenza just dominate? Let's see what's what was their head to head this year. Let's let's check that. Um, Milano. That's a good question. Pia, while, Pia while, head to head. While, while you're checking that, I think the we can talk about the last week of the regular season on, on Sunday because the only reason why Milano is playing Piacenza and not Perugia is because Milano came back from down two to one against Perugia to beat them in five and grab a couple points to push them into sixth. And that that showed me that that team is ready to go to the playoffs. I, I was really that that was one of the most fun regular season matches of the year. And really? I, oh yeah, it, it was very fun, very very entertaining. 
Um, Milano barely won both the, the fourth and the fifth. It was, it was a two point margin both times. Um, great performances across the board from from both teams. Really, Wil- Wilfredo Leon looked pretty darn good. He had six aces. Did not pass the ball very well. Uh, Wasim Bentara was incredible. I don't understand why he keeps getting pulled on the bench for Jesus Herrera. That one doesn't really make sense to me. But uh, on the Milano it, side, I mean, it, that can... one makes sense to me because you want to keep them both warm. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, yeah. Because because th- those those are two guys who are are top five in efficiency, as we're going to go over in, in in just a second here. And you want to keep Herrera warm. You you want to keep him happy. That's 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 managing a team well, unlike Lavarini does. Um, <laughs> And it so, wasn't it wasn't a do or die match on, no, by right? by any means for Perugia. So 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 that to me is is a coach who's like, hey, you know what? I'm I'm going to run both of you, and why not? If you have Zerdo out there, why not? Why not? Like if you have him, because like I suspect, not that I know Herrera all that well, but we've had a few interactions. Let's say, you know, we've <laughs> we've communicated in ways hasn't always been positive, <laughs> but there's been communication. Um, I suspect that he is like. Herrera is not a type of guy that you want to have salty on your team, uh, especially when I'm assuming that the two Cubans are kind of, you know, like scissoring together and stuff like that a lot. Um, <laughs> that, you know, what, like if, if he's Leon's guy, then you want to keep him happy. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't disagree. However, Bentara is the starting opposite on Perugia, and that that needs to be the case going into the playoffs. Um, yeah, I also agree with giving Camille Semenyuk mostly a break because you're going to need him very much in the playoffs when, when Perugia gets there. And I think Perugia, once they... I, I'm not sure if they were able to check on what was going on around the league, but I think that this works out incredibly well in their favor. I, uh, Verona is way easier for Perugia to beat in the playoffs than Milano would be. I just think Perugia matches up so much better against Verona with their just elite world-class serving ability and Verona's similar catastrophic weaknesses to serving. Uh, so I, this, this, this honestly, the, the result of this match, Perugia-Milano, is a win-win for both teams. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Perugia just was just like... Nine and zero in sets, like up and down the league, and got and got on out of there. That's kind of what what I'm predicting, really. No, but I, I think I might have think that Perugia was just like, look, if we if we drop this, we play Verona, and we'd much rather play Verona. That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if they if it was possible for them to know that. I'm I'm wondering if some if somehow they got the information that Verona got donged by Lube. Because if they Absolutely. did, then, then I, I I could use. I mean, what what do you mean? How how could they have got the information? They all have iPads on the bench that are attached to the internet. You're telling me that someone on their staff wasn't watching the game and being like, "Oh, look, this is a possibility, right?" So we just like pump the brakes a little bit. Let's just glide past. Let's let Milano and Piacenza battle each other in because that's going to be an absolute bloodbath. We're just going to serve aces on Stooge Chef because he doesn't like to coach passing whatsoever. And then we're going to get ready for the semifinals. Hundred percent. That's what yeah, happened. That that broke super well for Perugia. But yeah, I, I like the way Milano played. Yuki Ishikawa had twenty. I didn't think uh, now his efficiency wasn't very good. Uh, Sixteen for twenty nine with eight errors. Uh, did have three aces. That's nice. Um, he will obviously be important for them in the playoffs. Paolo Poro was really good. We'll talk about some season ending stat things in a minute. But uh, Milano looks like yeah. a playoff ready team, and I'm I, I'm. I cannot wait for them to play Piacenza tomorrow. That's definitely my favorite of the four playoff series. Uh, here are the final standings for whatever it's worth. Uh, I mean, we knew the eight playoff teams going into the weekend, but uh, we just didn't know some of those seeds in the middle. So Piacenza took care of Modena. They clinched third. Lube took care of Verona. They clinched fourth. Uh, Monza took care of Cisterna, but it didn't really matter. They they ended up sitting in fifth and uh uh, like I said, Milano, Milano jump Verona, and then that's it's our playoff bracket. It starts tomorrow, and every game is at the exact same time. This Liga, Italy. Liga. My goodness, dude! Are any of the people that consume your product under the age of seventy-five? Do you have anybody? Oh, plenty, that... plenty. Just no one, no one in any position of power, right? Oh. Because God, you know I it's like the CDB it. where the board, the board members are getting kickbacks from everything. Uh, but speaking of Italy, uh, one of our number one Italians in our Discord and in our hearts, Mr. Tommy Blizzards, Blizzard Tommaso Panini, did was very, very wonderful and put together season stats because, of course, no volleyball in the league can put 
together any comprehensive stats, right? We can do it super well in the CCAA, U Sports, NCAA, NAIA. Hell, Rob's a all American in college club for whatever that's worth. And I'm sure they kept better stats than most of the professional <laughs> leagues that we have in Europe. Right. Uh, so thank you, um, Tommaso. Thank you, Tommy Blizzard, uh, for writing this out. He basically now gave this, top hey, five. this here, this on the screen, I made. I put these stats together by my own hand, but Tommy's oh, okay. are more complete. And I'm going to copy paste them uh, in, the ch in the live chat right now. Uh, Tommy shared this in the Discord for us. Uh, there's just a little more completeness with some more rankings and then the, uh, some team some team stats at the end, which I really like. But they're, uh, some of the individual stat leaders, I think, are really worth pointing out. And we talked about last week the, the chance for Chisterna and Teo Four to go out in match 22 of the season and clinch the league lead in scoring. And he did. Uh, led the league in both scoring and points per set, which for 420, first, let's go, blah, blah. <laughs> which is insane. Yeah, 420 points, 4.94 points per set, almost got to 5.0, but incredible. And Teo Four is staying with Chief Sterna for I think two more seasons, which I love. So that that that's just it's it's an insane, insane season for a rookie to come into the Super League and lead the league in scoring. It's really remarkable just gets me scared for that next generation of French volleyball that's looking a little different than this generation, but still tantalizing. Teo Four, Timothy Carl, it's going to be fun. Maybe Garcia. Who knows? Um, yeah. Um, sorry. Then the, the the others, I mean, the, this is the most slam dunk MVP in maybe any season of maybe any sport ever. Oh, and wow. that Crystal clear belongs to Alessandro Micheletto. The season that this man put together is absolutely insane. Let me read you some things. 348 points. That's that's good for fourth overall and first among outside hitters. 4.70 points per set. Gross. That's good for third overall and by far the most among outside hitters. Uh, attack efficiency. 454 on the season, by far the most among wings, outside and opposites combined. That's absolutely bananas. Uh, tied for the league lead with 35 blocks. Tied with Addis Legumja for most blocks among non-middles, 14th overall. And by far the most blocks per set at 4.7, at por sorry, 0.47 amongst non-middles as well. And and was up there in, in, in serving, I think, let's see, Aces per set, yeah, 0.43 aces per set, good for fourth in the entire league. One of the great individual seasons of all time, of all time, and the clear MVP of the league is the unicorn. And I mean, 454 efficiency is Correct. the only is is the number that that really jumps off to me. It's outrageous. What's crazy to me, Rob, is that he's going to have to be even better than that in the playoffs. Now that's we're totally done, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. So this is this is this is really going to be the test uh, for him. Like this yes, this is. this is this is really going to be the big test for him of of how can he bounce back not bounce back but how can he really lead that team because that that they're going to need it right Pedraskinen was one of the best middles in the in the league this year how this how how effective is he going to be with a new setter out there great right? point I this this Trento team has been so rock solid all year, and now it's really like this is truly going to be a test of Micheletto. Um, and I think he's up to the task. Like, if there's one dude good. who's continuously like up the ante and up the bar for himself, not only as a Super Liga player, but just like over the course of his entire career, uh, I think it's Alessandro Micheletto. So it's, it's going to be uh, interesting to watch. I think so too. Uh, also, for the record, uh, I was right. Wasim Bentara came in his first year in the Super League and led the league in kill percentage. Just wanted to throw that one out there. Uh, and actually, funny enough, Herrera was right behind him in second, which is which crazy. Is, which, which is which is exactly what I was just saying, right? That's yeah. exactly why Herrera's playing. Because right. if he's he's playing that well, and you're probably going to need him down the stretch, there's going to be a time where, like, maybe hope to God he doesn't get injured, right? Like, knock on wood. Um, but like at one point he's probably going to have some bad games. So yeah, you want you want Herrera to be on. Um 
I'd love I'd love to dive into these stats with you, Rob. But uh, I got to get going. Pretty I got to get running soon, so I don't, okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if we have time for that. Let's let's move right along. Uh, yeah, I, I put the link in, in the live chat. It's also in the Discord. So is this image in the Discord if you want to discuss more of the stats because I, I love those sort of conversations. But yeah, um, the Italian playoffs kick off tomorrow. Everett, really quick, let's make picks. Who wins these Ooh. four series? Trent, Trento versus Modena. Trento. I still think it's going to be Trento Moden as a garbage fire. Suppose Kov hits a inch over the net. He's <laughs> he's bad. Um, Piacenza. I think Piacenza is going to be able to take it o- over Milano. I think last year was 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 a bit of a fluke. Uh, Perugia is going to serve the crap out of Verona. It won't even be close. Um, Verona might be lucky to win a, a set or two. Um, and I think I'm, I'm I'm picking this one with my heart. Mons is going to win the series in five. Okay. I like you? those picks. I've I've also got Trentino. Uh, I've also got Perugia, but I'm going to go with Lube and 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 Milano. Uh, right. I, I can't believe I'm picking. Can't believe I'm picking Milano, but I will. I actually do kind of like them against Piacenza. Uh, last couple things. Uh, congratulations to the Berlin Recycling Volleys. They won the German Cup. I mean, uh, it's 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 kind of weird to think that it's actually not a tournament that they've traditionally done that well in. Uh, they they used to lose it every year in the in the final to Friedrichshafen, but uh, this is their second in a row. This is their third in five years. So good for Berlin. They three donged Hersching in the final. I don't understand what Hersching was even doing there. We can move on from it, but I just wanted to bring it up. Congratulations to them. Also, Berlin should get an award for the two awkwardest looking liberos. One you've got half corn rows, and then the other one you've got goggles. So like Berlin, like figure out the barrel game. Figure it out. Better. Hey, you, you also, viewers, you, you guys still owe me a legitimately good picture of Satoshi Suiki's cornrows. Mm, I still haven't yeah. seen a great photo of that. You guys owe me that. And, what and what are you? That. What are you giving us again? So if, uh, as a friendly reminder, if you give me a photo of Satoshi Tsuiki with cornrows next to Camille Ricklitzky with cornrows, oh photo, yeah. A photo that I've put in the Discord many times. I will put. I will send you all a photo of me with frosted tips from when I lost a bet a couple Fuck of years. Guys, ago. come on, please. That, that, please. Those are the sticks. <laughs> those please. Are the sticks. All right. Those are the um, sticks. Finally, Rob, to a little bit of PVF and you know what? Just as I thought, I was getting a handle on this league and a handle on what was going on. Things kind of get turned on on their head we have a two-way tie right now in first between atlanta and omaha now atlanta did have a big week they did kind of move into that position um by equaling up uh with with wins and and matches to omaha but they started the week with a three dong loss uh to omaha and then ended up picking up uh wins of their own another vegas and san diego who are the two worst teams in the league so yeah but hey they they were able they're able to pick up uh, pick up those wins atlanta of course started the year really well with a with a win off of omaha in the first uh win of the match of the year but a team that i've been really high on and has been plummeting rob has been uh Grand Rapids, they are on a three game slide. And you're you're mentioning San Diego, they're that worst team in the league. They've lost two of the games to San Diego, one That's of the games to, to, to Orlando, who has now just jumped over them. Something needs to change. Whereas Columbus is figuring out a way to win without Asia O'Neill, which is absolutely stupendous. So it's it, there's so much parody in this league, Rob. Yeah. And I absolutely love it w- watching it for that. There's there's so much parody. Um and there's no clear favorites. They like there there really is like Omaha, sure, they've been really good, but they've also lost a, a match to Vegas, right? Their their second loss of the year came came to Vegas. So anything could happen right now. And I'm kinda I'm I'm getting I'm getting even more into it. Yeah, it's it's legitimately fun. I think the 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 scope and the scene and the landscape are starting to um starting to get laid down and people are starting to get it and team, you're getting starting to get some history between the teams you're starting to get a little bit of spice which i like i still uh still would love for there to be a, even a little more intensity between the two teams whenever they play uh, i would still like to see the offensive numbers continue to improve but yeah the, i think because it's because it, the league is young and because the format is a little bit squirrely and nobody knows who's playing who when, it opens it up for insane parity, which is awesome. Because uh, nobody, no one team is better than any other. It's more of like the North American sport thing, like we were talking about earlier, where there 
it's not just the richest teams being able to buy the best players. There was a draft. I'm not sure if there is a salary cap, but I'm sure there it's it's a more regulated situation on how um, how much you can spend on your rosters. I don't know the details. I would actually love for them to make that public. But uh, as is the way with a lot of North American sports leagues, they're set up to have the most parity possible. And I love that. That, that that's it's just what I'm used to watching. And I like seeing volleyball uh, in in that way or on any given night because there's because like conditions are generally more equal across the board. Anybody can beat anybody. That's cool. And I, I think, too, that the American way of playing volleyball leads to that. And the NCAA leads to that. Because let's be honest, all of the top stars are, have gone off. Like, all of the, the big names in volleyball have, have gone. Maybe, like, Asia O'Neal. And, like, like there's like there's a few of them that, that stick around. So, so what's left is a really solid base of athletes who are all kind of the same level. And ultimately, it's, it's going to be fantastic uh, for the long run. Um, more specifically, though, I kind of want to know what's happening to Sloan at over at Grand Rapids. She was kind of one of one of the athletes that I was really high on in that last match over five sets, eight for thirty one, um, which which is which is a little disappointing for her. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to to continue watching watching the watching the P- PVF. I'm just I'm getting sick of their broadcasts and only having a handful of of advertisements. Cut them out. Just give me a blank screen. I I don't need to see that USAV advertisement four times a set. I really don't. Yeah, yeah, it's rough. It's the that part of the broadcast is still pretty rough. And we've we've got they've got two more two full more months of regular season play. I like the league runs through. I think that looks like May twelfth is the last game on the schedule. So we're gonna get a lot more. A lot more data and just uh, just a lot more out there uh, before the top four teams out of the seven make the playoffs. Can I get some stat leaders, please? That would be like, great. Can we get some 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 type of stat leader leaders here? Like, what is going on with the stats? Yeah, I, I, I don't want them to hit like a. I don't want them to hit a lull because there's this this season is pretty long and there's a lot of matches. I'm not. I can't tell mm-hmm. exactly how many teams are going to play, but um, they, I would like to see them continue to innovate on the media side to be able to push through the next couple months before you get the drama of the playoff race that just comes naturally with, with more intensity, but there, there needs to be a little bit more juice in the next couple of months from a media side. Yeah. Something, something, some, something's gotta, gotta get bumped up there. Some people in the chat are saying that um, people on the couches are, are weird. Um, a I love Verona, I think Verona has people on the couches and I absolutely hate the volleyball vibes of making like the floor around the, the court being like, like presidential almost like stats people and journalists and stuff like that it's a bad look you're up figure it out right it's the let the, let the people get close to it yep the, the, yeah like let's get the vnl style um which was you know why one of the reasons that they like the vnl style vnl saw pictures i'm not i'm i'm not making this up if ivb saw pictures of the 2017 u sports women's volleyball finals um and they played it at the old Ma- uh, Maple Leaf Gardens here in here in Toronto. And they like had the the court, but they had like chairs right up to the side of the court, like it was a basketball game and MV- NBA game. And they saw pictures of that, and they're like, "Oh, that would be cool for volleyball." I'm not I'm not kidding. Is you. that actually where that came from? This is this is this is a story I've heard. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, it is better. Like get get people closer to the court. Volleyball is the best when you can see it in person, and it, it makes a big difference. If you're in the tenth row versus the first the first row, that is a huge difference in how and yeah. how you see the game in person too. So I love it. That's great. Like uh, imagine like you know those those clips when like Shaq is like running like running after the ball and like dives into the crowd. Like awesome. imagine imagine Mika Leto like going like making a dig and then he dives in the crowd and people catch him and throw him back out there and he goes off and gets a kill and then he runs back to the crowd and give everyone high five. I was like, fuck yeah, that's electric. Awesome. I want it right now. Awesome. Just Love got it. my stoked, just got myself stoked on it. <laughs> All right. There's a lot of volleyball this week. Uh definitely join the volleyball source Discord if you haven't already. There's a link in the description for that. Uh, you've got to get in there because the the Scudetto playoffs and for men's Italy start tomorrow. There's, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of ball this weekend and all the different regular seasons, including the second round of the Scudetto playoffs, CEV all next week. But we'll be back on next week's show, uh, probably Monday. We will let you guys know for sure. Probably Monday to preview all those Champions League series, catch up on Italy, catch up on everything else. You know where to find us. Uh, ever anything else? No, that's it. Um, 
for those in Canada, CCAA uh, National Championships start this week. If you want to watch some college ball, nice. unfortunately, I won't, won't be there like I was last year, but I will be in Kingston uh, for the U Sports Men's Volleyball Championships that get kicked off next week. I will be on the broadcast for that. So, love looking it. Looking forward to it. Thanks, people. We love you. Bye.